All right then, gang. So now we're accepting messages, right, on the server from the client. And those messages are being turned into an object right here by using json.parse on the JSON string that we get. Now, at this point, what we want to do is take this data and we have a name property on that. And we have a message property on that as well. We want to take that and we want to broadcast that message to all of the clients currently connected via a WebSocket. So to all of the WebSockets currently inside this map. So what I'm going to do is create a function now which does that. So down here, let me first of all say broadcast events to all clients. Now let me create this function. I'm going to call it broadcast event and that is equal to a function right here and inside this function as an argument we want to take in the event object. Now I'm going to create an interface up here to describe what this object is going to look like and this object has to have a name property which is a string and a message property which is also a string. So let me create that. I'm going to say interface broadcast opt and that is going to have a name property which is a string and by the way if you want to learn more about interfaces definitely check out my TypeScript tutorial the link to that's down below and a message is also a string basically all we're doing is setting up a structure for certain types of objects and then right here where we have this function we're going to say that the object that we receive in as an argument must follow the broad cast object interface so any object we take in as an argument must have these properties so now down here this thing does have those properties we have a name on it and we also have a message on it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete this line where we log it to the console and instead i'm going to call broadcast event and pass in that event object so then up here in the broadcast event function we want to cycle through our map and we want to send a message to each client via each of those web sockets. So let me now say sockets and we can use a method on this map called for each, just like we can on arrays. And inside here, we're passing a callback function and we're going to fire this function on every item inside that map. Now, each time around, we get access to that item, which we'll call WS, and that is going to be of type web socket. Because remember, each item in here is a web socket. The key is the ID, but the item value itself is a WebSocket. So we get access to each one of those as we cycle through them. So right here, we want to take that individual WebSocket that we're currently iterating, and we want to send a message through it to the browser. So again, we use the send method. Much like we did from the browser to send a message to the server, we use this same send method to send a message from the server to the browser. So we want to send a JSON string. Currently, we have an object. So let's now stringify that by saying JSON.stringify and pass in the object right here. And that is it. We're passing a JSON string as a message down this WebSocket to the browser. So now every browser connected via their own WebSocket is getting that message on the front end. Now, notice how the passing of the JSON object right here and the stringifying of this object back into JSON right here in our case is a little bit redundant. We're not really doing much in between. We could have just kept it as a JSON string and then pass that back here instead of turning it into an object and then back into a string. But we are checking that the message we broadcast contains a name and a message property. And we wouldn't be able to do that if we didn't turn this into an object first. And also this is good for if we wanted to do something else to the object in between these two steps, such as add a date property or an ID property to each message. All right. So now we're sending that message back out to all clients, all browsers. Let's now listen for that message on the front end and react to it. So now after we send a message from the browser initially, the server then takes that message over here and it sends out that message or broadcasts that message to every other browser that is connected via a WebSocket to the server, including the browser which originally sent the message to the server. So we now need to set up a listener in the browser which listens for data coming back from the server down the WebSocket and then react to that by outputting that data in the DOM, that new chat, right? 
So we need to do two things. We need to set up a listener, which is listening for these events coming back down the WebSocket to the browser from the server. Then when we get one of those, we need to fire a function which takes that data and outputs the event information to the DOM. So the message itself and the person who sent that message. So let's set up this listener first of all. And the way we do that is by taking our WebSocket instance, which remember we have up here, all right, this WS thing. And we can use a method on that called add event listener, just like we would add to a form here. Now, this event is called a message event. So we're getting a message from the server. And when that happens, we fire a callback function. Now, I'm going to call this callback function output message. You can call it what you want, but now I'm going to declare that up here. So I'll say const output message is equal to a function. And inside this function, we automatically get access to an argument, which is the stuff we get back from the server when we get this message. So let me just say ev for event. And the first thing I'm going to do down here is just console.log this event, right? So let me save that now. And now if we go back over here and choose a nickname, first of all, enter chat. Now, if I open up the console by going to console and send a message over here, press send, it goes to the server, it should come back to us. And then we log out the event that we get back from the server, right? So press send and we see this almost instantaneously. It didn't take long at all. So this is the message event we get back. And on here we get a data property. So that's the stuff we actually want, the name of the person and the message sent. So what we could do is actually destructure that inside the parentheses. So we could say we want the data from the event. And now we're just going to get access right here to that data object. So if I save this again and come and refresh, then I'm going to choose a name and I'm also going to type a message, press send. And now we get this. So this is the JSON string that we need. So the first thing we want to do is pass this and then extract these two properties from it. So I'm going to say right here, JSON dot pass, and we want to pass the data, right? So now we have this object instead of a JSON string, and then we want to extract from that the name and the message. So let's use destructuring to do this as well. So we want to destructure from here, first of all, the name and then the message property. So now we have, oops, let's spell that correctly. Now we have access to both of those two properties. They're the things we want to output inside a new LI tag. So what I'm going to do is set up a new template, first of all, using template strings. So I'll say let template equal to template strings. That's the back ticks. And that means we can output dynamic data easily inside this template string. And we want this template to look very much like these li tags up here. So let me just grab that thing, copy it and paste it right down here like so. So this is what we want our template to look like. But instead of this being Yoshi, we want it to be this name. So we can output a variable inside the template string by using dollar sign and curly braces and the variable itself, which is the name. And then down here, we want to output the message. So dollar sign curly braces message. And that is all we need to do. So now we're creating a bit of a template every time we get a new message back from the server. So every time someone sends something, we're going to get that back to the browser and we're going to create a template for that. And then we want to output that to the DOM. So let's do that by grabbing this chat list right here. Remember, that is this UL. So we're going to say down here, we want to get the chat list. And we want to add to the inner HTML, so plus equals, meaning we're not going to replace this. We're just going to add to it. And we want to add to that the template. So this thing right here. OK, so now every time we get a new event, a new message, we're going to create a template and add that template to the UL. So we're adding this li tag to it. Now, I want to get rid of this hard coded stuff right here. So to begin with, it's just an empty UL. And then only when we get new messages, is it going to output a new li tag in that. So I've saved that now and let me come over here and refresh and just try this out. So choose a nickname, Sean, and then the message. Hey, and now we can see we get this right here. If I send another message, then we see that message right here. 
Okay, so finally, I just want to test this out with three different browsers. So imagine these are three different people all across the world at different points, all visiting this website. So the first two right here, they're going to choose a name, Mario and Luigi. And the third one right here thinks he's really clever and is going to go into the dev tools and delete this form so he doesn't have to put a name in. And then is going to come to the chat room and say, actually, the chat room is not going to be hidden. So I don't want to enter a name in. Now, remember, we had a default value for the name, which was anon, anonymous for those that did not enter a name. And that's what would happen if we tried to do something like this. So I can see over here, yo, and then over here, hey, and you can see that updates in every chat room. And then if I try to add a message over here, it says anon. So there we have it. We have created this chat room with Dino and WebSockets. Now there is much more you could do here. This is just a simple chat room. So for example, you could list all of the current users at the top or the bottom. You could add timestamps or dates to each message. You could develop private chats, etc. So have a play around and post anything you create down below in the comments. And in the future, I may do some kind of private chat tutorial using Dino and WebSockets building on from this as well. So then my friends, I really, really hope you've enjoyed this series. And if you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot and it helps out an enormous amount. And if you do want to join the cause and support the channel, you can do by clicking the join button on the channel homepage or underneath the video or right down below. You also get a little cool ninja badge next to your name in the comments for that. And it's 99 pence or cents per month. And I've also created several premium in-depth courses on Udemy. So the first one is Modern JavaScript. The second one is D3 and Firebase. And the third one is Vue.js and Firebase. So if you want to take one of those, all the links with the discounts automatically applied to them are going to be in the video description down below. So again, thanks so much for watching and I'm going to see you in the very next course.